We continue with a reading of Logic for the Millions by A. E. Mender, 1947 Philosophical Library. We're talking about how can we know, have ground for beliefs, and how can we know things. Okay. But it is reasonable to accept the judgment only of someone in whom we have not blind, but reasoned confidence. That is why we have to test Dawkins on every point when he's speaking such nonsense as he does in The God Delusion. We have to test him on every point. We are not going personally to the test of facts and reasoning upon which his judgment is based. Yet there must be some tests. We shall not test the judgment, but we must test the judge. Unless he satisfies the tests, we are not justified in reason in accepting his judgment. So Dawkins proves his complete ignorance when he talks about Alma and Parthenos, how they are a mistranslation of one another. We cannot trust him on this any more than we can trust him on anything he says in regard to God while he is completely ignorant of God and has no relationship with God. While he is talking, he's talking in the air as he did when he took his little stab into the Bible. Okay. And unless we can find a judge who satisfies all the tests, there remain but two alternatives for us. Either to keep an open mind on the question or else to judge for ourselves. Judgment of the recognized expert authorities. All four of the following conditions must be complied with to justify us in accepting a judgment under this heading. The expert authorities concerned, or at least their representative or spokesman who is quoted, must be 1. <clears throat> identified. It is not enough to claim that a German professor says so-and-so, or that doctors say, or that history teaches us. We must know exactly who it is, whose judgment it is, is to be accepted. Two, recognized. That is, recognized as an expert authority on that particular subject and recognized by his peers and co-workers in that field. There are many sham authorities recognized, for example, by the press. Amen. Dawkins is very popular out there. By some following of laymen. Remember this. Dawkins and that scientist over there in Korea who managed to convince everybody that they had managed to clone a human being or a clone something. They're going to be the same thing in the end. But these are not in a position to judge man's standing. Only his co-workers and advanced students can do that. It is essential that the authority cited shall be recognized authority on the particular subject in question. Now, now is Richard Dawkins a recognized authority on God? Hallelujah. Does he even know the meaning of the word faith? Not according to his discussion with John Lennox, he doesn't. Amen. The bare fact that a man is famous scientist, is a famous scientist in physics, does not give him any standing to pronounce on, say, allegedly spiritualistic phenomena. Similarly, the fact that a successful man is recognized as an authority on business does not give him any standing in religion, politics, or foreign affairs. Now, notice this. Dawkins claims he is an ethnologist. Now, most of us don't even know what ethnology is. Right? So, he's an expert, a proclaimed expert, self-proclaimed expert in ethnology. What on earth has that got to do with Yahuwah and God and the Bible? And he proves his ignorance of these things, that he cannot talk on these things, through his example of the prophecy in Isaiah 7.14 and the translation of Alma into um, Parthenos, virgin to virgin, young woman to young woman. Three, living. We may, however, accept the judgment of a dead authority if, but only if, we are sure that no fresh facts or arguments can have come to light since his death. This condition can rarely be satisfied, so normally we are bound to confine ourselves to living authorities. It is useless, for example, to quote any scientist or historian of the last century as an expert authority now. His evidence and reasoning may be very valuable, but we are not justified in accepting it on authority. Unless it is confirmed and vouched for by the living authorities, they alone can review the matter in the light of whatever fresh facts are now available. It is only the confirmation of a living expert authority which justifies us in accepting the judgment of an earlier one. I'm not saying I agree with this guy and everything he says, but anyway, it's interesting. For unbiased, <laughs> this is a hard condition. We can never be sure that it is fulfilled in any case where the finding can affect the material interests. 
The finding can affect the material interest. Listen. The prestige, the popularity, the sentiments, or the happiness of the authority concerned. Richard Dawkins uses biblical phraseology, biblical terms, to beautify his books, and he gets money from the sale of those books. He uses uh, jokes about the Bible, etc., to make money. Amen. His material interests are affected, his happiness is affected, his prestige is affected, his popularity is very affected. Fortunately, however, there is an alternative. For if there is agreement among most of the expert authorities, then we may assume that their various interests and prejudices cancel out, leaving us with a disinterested and unbiased composite authority whose judgment may be accepted. And obviously there's a massive disagreement. We see Richard Dawkins fighting with John Lennox and every scientist who knows about the order of the universe from a different perspective from Dawkins. Even Darwin would not agree with Dawkins. Darwin claimed to be a theist. It was the perspective of a theist. Dawkins tries to undermine all things to do with Yahuwah. To summarize, the four conditions are that the expert authority must be identified, recognizing that subject, living as a rule, unbiased or virtually unanimous. I know we know that it's impossible for someone to be unbiased, but the bias <laughs> is obvious with Dawkins. He's not even trying to be unbiased. He's completely biased. He's completely missing it. He is alive, so that's uh, there. But he's not recognizing anything to do with Yahuwah or God or the Bible or spirituality whatsoever. He may be an expert on atheism, but he's not even that from the way he's placed his arguments and the amount of Bible he uses to support his position. For example, his position on altruism. He says, laying down one's life for one's friend is an, obviously an altruistic thing to do, but so is. And so he takes for his altruistic concept for how the world is to run something straight out of the mouth of Jesus without giving one, one single word of recognition that Jesus so those were the one who laid down that idea. And that was in the book, The Selfish Gene, page 6. Um, if any one of the foregoing conditions is not satisfied, the statement cannot be accepted as resting on recognized expert authority. Judgment of someone in whom we personally have confidence, he not being one who satisfied the test to make him a recognized authority. With most of us, there are many questions upon which we are unable to form any rational and reliable judgment of our own. And yet we may not know or may not be in a position to consult the recognized expert authorities. In such case, we may still be justified in forming a judgment, as it, is, were, as it were, by proxy, adopting as our own the conclusions reached by somebody else. As before, this does not mean that we fail to recognize the importance of verified facts and logical reasoning. On the contrary, it is still our recognition of this which impels us to delegate our reasoning to some other person. Someone who is, we believe, on this particular question, able to form a more reliable judgment than we could form for ourselves. The recognized expert authorities are the same for all, and we have only to apply the certain persons, the four clear-cut tests given on the preceding pages. But in the present case, where we are concerned with someone who is not the recognized authority, as defined, we are obliged to depend on our own personal estimate of his qualities. Only if three conditions are fulfilled are we justified in reason in accepting a belief on the judgment of another, he not being a recognized expert authority. These conditions are 1. Confidence. We must have confidence in his knowledge of the subject and in his ability, rationality, impartiality, and honesty. 2. Reasoned confidence. Our confidence, by the way, anyone who proclaims a gospel of atheism against the existence of our God, Yahuwah, and fights against him, he is under the question of honesty. Amen? If he is honest, he knows he does not know. And he needs to make that absolutely clear. If he makes out that he is completely certain on these issues, there's a question. There's a question, because he knows nothing. If he is an atheist, he knows nothing of God. He has not met him. He has not a relationship with him. He has not had revelation and guidance and direction. Amen? If he is an atheist, he completely does not know God. Therefore, he has no basis for his uh, opinions about God. Reasoned confidence. Our confidence must have some rational basis. That is, we must know him or know about him, and all we know about him must be consistent with our belief in that he possesses the qualities stated in 1, 
The more we know about him, which is consistent with this, the greater 